Yo, what's up guys? Uh, this is gonna be a video on behind the scenes of what goes on when I take photos at work. Um, it's by popular demand that I'm making this video, which means one of you guys suggested it. Actually, Ben Serio, uh, am I pronouncing that right, requested it. Uh, so I'm making this video and I thought it was an interesting topic since I don't really get to talk to people about what goes into um, shooting the cars. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so let's get down into it. I've got my GoPro set up in front of my computer so I can show you guys behind the scenes um, processing the photos and whatnot. Uh, I took a little GoPro video also of a shoot that I did. It's not very in depth uh, and I'm sorry that I couldn't get more footage but I was working <laughs> while I was doing it. But anyways, uh, typically when I shoot a car at work, it starts out with um, positioning the car in the back right of the delivery bay, which is the rim that I shoot in. Uh, the reason is, is I like to get as far away from the car as possible and then get as far in as I can with the lens. Uh, it, it provides a better perspective. I typically shoot, um, actually for context, I shoot on the uh, Canon 6D uh, with the 24 to 105 uh, with a polarizer, obviously. I don't have it on here right now, but uh, I usually shoot it around uh, uh, 70 millimeter. Uh, which gives me, I think, a good perspective. I'll show you some photos. It, it makes it to where the front and the rear wheel look the same size-ish, uh, which is huge. It doesn't get, make the front end pointy, which is what you want to avoid. Uh, so that's the first shot. The first shot's always as far away as possible, uh, so that way when the customer sees it, it looks, I guess, as best as it possibly can. Um, the next set of photos, I move the car over so that I can get the front end, um, you know, three-quarter, and then the side. Then I move the car again so I can get the other side. Um, rear three-quarter side. Uh, if it's convertible like this Ferrari is, uh, I always take a picture with the top closed and top open so that way they can see the kind of the difference side by side. Uh, most people will know what the car looks like, but people like to see it. Like, what does it look like with top pose? What does it look open? They can show their kids or their wife or whoever they're, you know, bouncing ideas off of. They can show them, hey, this is what it looks like. Uh, and then after that, I make sure that I take photos of, of the interior, so the door panels, um, the steering wheel, the seats, the center console, uh, et cetera. And then those are kind of the basics, obviously the, the odometer also. And then the next thing is anything special about the car. So on this Ferrari, I took a picture of the, uh, in the trunk, the plaque. That's always cool because then people can see exactly what is in the build sheet. Um, and then if a car has like a fire extinguisher, always take a picture of that. If it has any aftermarket parts like a ECU upgrade or exhaust or window tint, usually kind of not as, as big of a deal. Um, but, uh, other things that kind of make the look of the car different, I always take a photo of. It's important that you get it in there. Uh, the other thing is if it's a car that has like heated seats or heated steering wheel or blind spot monitor, I always try to find the button and take a picture of it. That way, when people are scrolling through the photos, they don't even have to read. They just know right off the bat, hey, this car has this, this, and this. I mean, really the descriptions there are just as, as added benefit so they can actually read through. Um, because pictures, I think, are more effective than um, the actual words, and, and I think our my managers would agree. Uh, so that's basically how the photo shoot goes. It's really simple. Uh, I'll plug in the memory card. I'll show you guys kind of how I, I process the photos. It's, it's nothing crazy really, but uh, I'll show you anyways. Uh, so if we plug in the card here, so the first thing I do is I, I just highlight all the photos once I get into my finder. Uh, I don't want this one. And then we'll load the raw camera editor. I'm sorry, the raw camera processor, I guess is what it's technically called. Okay, so we see the first photo. Um, you might be able to see it in the GoPro, but it's a little overexposed, but that's why I always shoot raw, um, so we can bring the exposure back down. Uh, so I make sure the exposure is, is correct. I usually bring the highlights down just a bit because the outside can sometimes blow out the, uh, the fender. Um, another tip, I always adjust the polarizer to where the side of the car um, shows less reflection. So if you see the top, it shows the, the roof and stuff, but that doesn't matter because it's not blown out. If I weren't to, or if I didn't rotate the polarizer to eliminate the glare here, it would actually be blown out. So that's why I do that. Uh, so I, I draw the hi highlights back. I bump the shadows just a tad. Um, I bump the clarity up to around 28. Uh, it seems to be kind of a good medium. The only reason why I do that is because it, it gives the picture a little bit more contrast. 
and you can see the lines a little bit better in the car. Uh, if you do too much, then it just looks like you just did a bunch of effects on it. It looks horrible. So I usually stick to around 28 on all my photos. Um, I go into the lens profile correction, and I always make sure that I do that. So when you enable it, it, it actually, on the 24 to 105 at 70, I think, what am I at? 75 millimeters is what I'm at right now. There's actually quite a bit of distortion, so that helps a lot. Uh, I go into sharpness, uh, usually just a little bit of sharpening and a little bit of noise reduction because I'm usually shooting at around 320 to 640 ISO, which isn't too bad on a full frame camera, but just, just in case, I, I, I do it as habit. Um, once I get done with that, I usually just highlight all the photos and then sync the settings. Uh, and usually that works. Usually I can, I can get all the photos to kind of look the same. Um, I'll have to go like this photo is a little bit overexposed, so we'll draw it back just a little bit. Uh, this one's a little underexposed. Uh, I, and you can see right here, like it's a little bit blown out. It's it's fine. I mean, ideally that wouldn't be like that, but um, it, it'll work for now. Uh, we'll increase the brightness on this, and then I'll hit shift and highlight those and then sync the settings. So that way they're all the same because they're all kind of underexposed. Uh, that one just turned out kind of bad. Uh, but you get the idea. It's pretty basic editing. I don't do any kind of uh, effects. I, I want basically the cleanest photo possible so that way the client knows exactly what they're looking at. There's no like, oh, there's, you know, is the color right? Is this and this? Like, there's just no dispute. They, they know that what they're getting is, um, what the photo shows is what they're getting in real life, uh, or at least as close as possible. So, and then I just scroll through all the photos, like just make sure they're all exposed correctly. Like this one could use a little bit. This is the plaque I was talking about. That one's a little dark. Uh, other thing is you can see that the, the, the actual photo isn't level. So that's really easy to fix in Photoshop in the raw editor. You just click on the uh, straighten tool and then we'll draw it like that, line it up, hit enter, boom, fix. Um, so then we'll scroll down. This door panel looks a little underexposed. We'll fix that. Uh, these interior photos look fine. Uh, steering wheel photo could be a little brighter. Uh, the gauge photos are fine again, and, and and really that's all I'm doing. I'm just going through, making sure all the um, exposures look fine. Um, this that actually, as context, this car isn't being advertised. This is a new 488 Spider. We always take photos of each brand new Ferrari that comes in, just for uh, documentation. Uh, nothing crazy. It's it's really just a, a simple photo shoot. But it, this process is the same if I were to shoot inventory. Uh, and we'll scroll through. I can tell that most of these photos are are decent. Um, and that's it. And then once I've, I've kind of gotten all that taken care of, I go shift a select all the photos. I'm sorry, uh, command a, and then I go save images and then save it to whichever folder, uh, and be done with it. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think it's pretty straightforward. What I, uh, my, my process, um, there's nothing complicated. Um, I think anybody can do it. it it's just a matter of, um, you know, learning what pictures are important and which ones aren't like, I don't, I try not to take a million different angles of the outside of the car. I really just try to get, you know, a three quarter to begin with, front left, I guess, or front right, three quarter, and then rotate around the car. I think it's about eight photos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight photos. Uh, just keep it simple. Yeah, that's enough. And then get a picture of the wheel um, so that people know what the style is. On this car, they can actually see the caliper color also, which is important. Um, if this car were to have any carbon fiber options, I would take a picture of every single one of those. Uh, and then that's pretty much it guys. I mean, it's, it's really simple. You want to take pictures of everything that matters and don't overshoot. If you have like a hundred photos, people are going to scroll through every single one of those. They don't want to see nine different angles of the same photo. It's just not necessary. So, um, yeah, that's it guys. I hope this was uh, informative to some degree. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave the comments down. Uh, I'll link you to kind of the, the gear that I use exactly if that's interesting to you. Uh, and then um, remember to subscribe if you liked what I produce. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if I shoot photos I can complete more on. And that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.